All right, this is going to be a short video covering most of the basic aspects of the Ninja Forms tool, how to, how to create one, how to duplicate, how to edit, and manage what's going on with the form data. So the first thing we're going to do is going to create us a test page. That way we can have some place to put our new form on. We'll go ahead and call it um, form test page. Go ahead and load up the Divi Builder. Let's go ahead and bring in the sub page header. There's our hero section. We'll get rid of that one. We'll go ahead and bring in our global footers. We don't need the form on this one. And we'll go ahead and create a standard section that's full width. This is where our form is going to reside. So we'll go ahead and collapse this and get it out of the way. And we'll hit publish. So now we have a place to test and view our, our new form. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at our forms. So we'll go over to all forms. If you have an existing form and you want to view the submissions, you can click on view submissions right here. And this is where all of your form information will be. That's where you can find it. We'll go ahead and click on all forms. Go ahead and click add new. Ninja form gives us templates to start with, so we'll start with a contact us. So they give us a basic name, email, message, and submit. So those are our form elements. This is where we'll go to do our editing. This is our actions. This is what's going on with our forms. This is advanced, and we'll get into that a little bit here in a second. So we'll go back to our form, and we're going to change this up a little bit. We're going to do first name, last name, phone number, email, message, then we're going to add a spam catch right over here next to our submit form. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change this one up a little bit and we're going to call it first name. Now in most of the forms that ILGM builds, we put our labels inside our form field. So we're going to come over here and we're going to go by form default and that'll allow us to put it in in the advanced section. It's called a placeholder. This just cleans things up and makes it pretty tidy. So there's our first name. So we'll hit done. We'll come down here. We'll add a last name. So there's last name. Okay, now we're going to drag this one up. See the blue bars? Those are important. Where the green is, is where it's going. So if I drop it right there, it's going to put last name underneath here. But I can also drag and drop it over here, or I can drag and drop it over here. And then if it accidentally puts one in, you just delete that column. And now you have first name and last name. We're going to make last name required, so we're going to click on the gear icon, click required. The new ones will automatically come in by form default. So then we go to advanced to create our placeholder label. We'll go ahead and hit done. Now we need to add a phone number over here. So we're going to come down to here. We're going to find phone. It added it into our list. And we are going to put it up and drop it right there. We're not going to make phone required, but we still need to edit it and make sure that it stays in the default. There's our placeholder. And if you'll notice, placeholder will be in either one of these positions. I ain't quite figured out yet why, but sometimes it's either on top, sometimes it's on bottom, but it's caught me a couple of times. So we'll go ahead and do that. Let's check our email one. So that one's above. We're going to go form default and we're going to go advanced and we're going to say email we're going to click on message we're going to put it in the default come over here to advance
questions or comments. We're going to hit done. So now we need to add in another element. We're going to do the anti-spam. We're going to drag and we're going to put it over here. We're going to click on it. We're going to add in the answer. So we're going to say 9. Form default is our position. We go to advance. In the placeholder, we're going to say, what is 3 plus 6? And we're going to hit done. So let's go ahead and publish this. Go ahead and exit out. So now we have a new one called contact me. So we're going to grab our short code, hit copy. We're going to go over to our page. We're going to hit code. We're going to call it And we're going to paste our short code and hit save. And let's do an update. So now let's take a look at this. So we'll right click and hit open in a new tab. There's our contact form. So this is a base start. Now, we, we're using form default and everything's on top, so we've got to go and change that setting. We also want to move the button over to the right. So let's come back to our form. Let's go ahead and edit. Now we're going to go to the advanced sections, and we're going to go to display settings, and we're going to go to advanced and we're going to tell it the whole default is going to be hidden because we're using inside the form fields. We'll say done and publish. Now we can take a look at that. Okay, now everything's inside the form. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of contact me and we're going to move our button over. So we'll come back to display settings and display form title will turn off. We'll come back to our form fields. We'll edit our submit button. We'll go to styles and we'll say float right. And we'll hit done. And let's publish again. And let's reload. So our title's gone. We'll do our titling in Divi instead. Our button is now moved over to the right and all of our information is here. If you want to add in what's required, you can do that in your placeholder. So we'll go back to the form, we'll go to what's required, and in our advanced section, we'll say REQ. Or you can add a star or however you want to do it. There's several ways you can do that. That's totally up to you. I prefer it this way because it keeps everything nice and tight and clean on our form and it makes it easy. So now we have our basic form. Everything is laid out nice and pretty and we're ready to go. So now we have to tell Divi what to do with this information once it's filled out. So we're going to come back over here. We're going to go to emails and actions. The first thing that we want to do is we want to save it to the database so that that information is stored in the section. I'll go back over here and show you. So that it's stored over here so we can view the submissions just like you saw earlier. If that's turned off, you won't have that option. It'll just send you an email. So we'll come back to here. This is the success message. That's the message that's going to show up right here when this page is done loading. So you can come in here and you can edit what that is going to say. So you can send this to the person. This is what it's going to send. Let's go ahead and put a space in there. 
And now email confirmation. Email confirmation is what's going to go to the user that filled out the form. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to modify this and say And then you enter this way the user will get a copy of everything that was entered. So there you go. So that's what the user is going to get. Now this is going to go to the user. The reply to is going to be to us. So you need to type in your email address. Or if it's sales or whatever your email address is. Now, email notification. This is what's going to go to you. This is your admin email notification. So when they fill it out, this is what you'll get. First thing we need to do is we need to put in where you want it to be sent to. And the reply to is their email address. And this is a new information. Now this says name here, but we changed those around, so we've got to fix this. So we're going to take that out. We're going to come over here and click on this. We're going to enter first name. So it's from first name and last name. So now we're going to come down here and we're going to change this up a little bit. We'll add in their first name. So we did name, phone, email, and message. So their name was first, last, phone is, email is, uh oh, that email is different than the one that we used earlier, so we have to change that. And here's their message. There's their message. So that brings up a good point about using the systems uh, template. Sometimes the the information changes, so we need to go back and fix that. So we'll come up to here and make sure that we have it fixed right. So email. We'll have to come back to here and change it here as well. It's always good to check that. So now we have our message that we're going to get with our information in it. So now we have all of this filled out. We can hit Done and Publish. And we can go ahead and Finish. And we can give it a test. Let's see if there's any errors. So we'll go ahead and reload this page. And we'll say, first name, Joe Dirt. and submit. So it's going to process. There's our message. We just got the email that just came in. 
Let's take a look at that real quick. So there's the email that just came in. That's the information that we got as the administrator. Now we gotta go look and see what Joe got. So we'll click on here. So there's the email that was sent from the website to Joe. And that's the information that Joe got so that he knows what he filled out and from who. So now you're good to go. The next step is, let's go back over to here. Let's hit forms and let's take a look at what was submitted. So we can view submissions for that particular form. And now we can come over here and hit edit. And here's all of the information that Joe sent. If you want to, you can also select it. You can export just that single file, or if you have a huge list, you can select them all and hit export and apply and save it as a file to your system. Now, one more piece to this, if you have the MailChimp extension, then you can add in the MailChimp process. So we'll come over here, and for those of you that don't know what it is, MailChimp is a bulk emailer that we have a, an extension for, so that way when this information gets filled out, it's going to be submitted to your MailChimp list automatically. So the way that we would do that is we would come over to Email and Actions, and we would add a new action. So we'll come down here, we'll select the MailChimp, and we'll select the list. In this case, they have one called Request for Information. These are the email fields that are going to go in there. So we need to add in the info for that. So we'll say email address. We'll say first name and last name. So now it knows where to go. If you've, if you've got some advanced, there's not any in this particular one. But if you have some advanced, you've got some tools over here. We'll go ahead and hit done. Now because MailChimp is going to send out a confirmation based on your rules to this user, we don't want this confirmation to go out and confuse them. Because remember, most MailChimp submissions are going to be double opt-in. So when somebody fills out this form, it's going to send them an email that says you need to click on this link before we're going to add you to our list. So we're going to go ahead and turn that confirmation off and then we'll hit publish. And now this is ready to go to the MailChimp account. The front end is going to look exactly the same, but what's going to happen different is when this gets filled out, this information will be submitted into the database locally, but a confirmation email from MailChimp will be sent to this email address that the user puts in and says, hey, you need to click this link in order to be added to the list, and then they'll be added to the list. So that way you're double sure that you're not breaking any spam rules and you can send them newsletters, information about your company and everything else.